sometimes it seems like every marker project ends with a white gel pen. And I know it's a fast and easy way to add a little shine, but does white gel pen really make it look shiny? Or is this just a case where it's, uh, well, okay, you know, it's something that everyone does. And we're so used to looking at gel pen details that no project really feels finished without a few dots or dashes of thick white ink. Today, I'm drawing and coloring a bright green apple with thick, drippy, shiny caramel. And I'm not using a white gel pen. Okay, full disclaimer here. This caramel apple, it doesn't exist in real life. This is more like the caramel apple of my dreams. In real life, caramel coated apples are kind of hard and super chewy. I don't like getting stuff stuck in my teeth. And frankly, most of the photo references that I found for caramel apples, they don't really look all that appetizing. I wanted something that looked soft and warm and comforting, like the caramel is so fresh that you can smell it. So this is a combination of several photo references. I want the caramel to ooze. So as I draw these drips, I'm paying special attention to the rounded surface form of the apple. This is a small detail, but it's going to help me later when I use color and shade to pull these drips away from the surface of the apple. I want the caramel to look like it's dripping off the apple, not sliding down the apple. We are all about the ooze today. And by the way, you can color along with me. The Caramel Apple Digital Stamp is available in my line art shop, along with links to the photo references and my supply list. This is not a coloring tutorial, but I know a lot of you will totally understand what I'm doing here, and you can do it yourself. Link down in the description. Okay, so we're oozing, right? Well, for caramel to ooze, we need areas where it's thick and heavy and drippy. And then we need other areas where the caramel is thin and translucent. And that's really the number one problem that I see with most caramel apple projects. People just kind of grab some golden brown markers and they spread them on like a thick layer of nail polish. That's the look that I'm trying to avoid here. I don't want my apple to look like it's been dipped in a gallon of brown paint. To give the impression of caramel weight in some areas, I'm underpainting with a violet marker. And you can see me stop every once in a while because I'm trying to figure out how the caramel, how it's going to be dripping and where it would be the heaviest. Then in the thinner areas, I'll be using more of my lightest caramel color, plus a trick that I will show you later. My blending combination here is V22, E99, YR27, and then YR24. And the colors are totally inspired by these reference photos. The violet is a theme that's running through the entire project. There's violet under the golden caramel, and then I'm going to shade the green apple with violet. I'll also shade the stick with violet, and that's before I even get to the violet stripes. Then I will be using lots of violet pencils over everything. By shading all of my objects with the same color, it makes this random apple photo reference that I found, it makes it feel totally related to my imaginary caramel and then the stick that I invented at the last minute. It all feels connected because they're connected by violet. And just to hit the weight thing home one more time, notice where I'm placing my caramel lights and then my caramel darks. The drips are heavy and they're almost ready to fall onto the table. So there's no light YR24 in the drips. The YR24 is mostly up at the top of the apple where the caramel is being stretched and pulled thin. I think too often we get dragged into this myth of shading everything on the left or always shading everything on the right as if directional lighting is like the most important part of every project. 
It's not. Depth, dimension, and realism do not come from lighting sources. The roundedness of this apple is the most important part of this image. Form. Form comes first. And right after that comes the weight of my caramel. I'm expressing both form and weight in my coloring, and I really don't give a darn where the light is coming from at this point. Okay, so we're skipping ahead in time here to where I begin adding the shiny reflections to the caramel. And because this caramel is only in my imagination, you probably think I'm winging it here, but I'm not. I'm using my Apple Photo Reference to add gloss to the caramel. Yes, this green apple is telling me where to add shine to the brown caramel. Green or brown, the color really doesn't matter here. The form of the apple and how the light hits that form, that dictates where the shine goes, whether the shine is hitting the green apple skin or the silky golden caramel. So where I see shine on the apple, that's exactly where I'm placing the shine on the caramel. And I'm using more than a white pencil to add shine. There are places where that shiny stuff feels warmer, so I'm using a creamy yellow pencil. And then there are areas where the shine feels cooler, and for that, I'm using pale lilac. When I do use white, I'm using the pencil with different pressures, so I'm developing some strong white lights in some spots, and then there's areas of a dimmer, softer light in other areas. And here's that trick that I mentioned earlier. I want the caramel to stretch thin at the top of the apple. So where the caramel is the thinnest, we're naturally going to see some of the green apple skin showing through the gold. Okay, it's pure coincidence, but my pencil here is called apple green. And then I'm boosting the vibrancy of that green with a pencil called lemon. This is such a small detail, but it adds to the drippy nature of the caramel. The green almost adds motion, and it definitely adds artistry and interest. I'll just let a bit of music play here while I finish adding shine to my drippy caramel. And remember, this is all coming from the green apple photo reference. I mean, sure, I'm exaggerating some of the shine, but it's all rooted in what I see on the apple. I want to challenge you today. Some of you are so rooted in the idea that everything needs a couple of swipes of white gel pen to look shiny. If that's the case, take a walk around your house or walk around the place that you work. Look at the shiny objects in the world around you and then really look at the shapes of that reflected light and look at the color of that light too. 
Most things don't look shiny because they have three white dots or a semicolon on the right side. And for those of you who have already noticed how fake and flat white gel pen looks on your projects, well, I encourage you to get your hands on this pencil and start substituting it for your usual gel pen shine. As you get braver, you can start using photo references to create bigger and bigger reflections. But in the beginning, just switching the harsh white gel pen for something softer is a great first step. You've invested lots of money in your markers and your coloring supplies. You've spent lots of time learning how to use them. Now let's take that next step, moving past the swoops and the dots that everyone does to something that looks more original, artistic, and realistic. You don't need that white gel pen. You can do this. And hey, if you're ready to take that next step using crazy colors like violet and green over something totally normal like golden caramel brown, that's great. I've got a whole video for you here which describes where I find these alternative colors and how to choose unique pencil colors for your next project.